G'day and welcome to the show. Today I'm putting my four-wheel driving skills to the test as I take on the brand new adventure park that's opened just outside of Tail and Bend. It's going to be a hell of a ride. More on that a little later in the show, but first, here's what else we have for you. We uncover the hidden tea rooms of Adelaide Arcade and reveal its exciting new future. And we get to know the locals on our ruggedly beautiful wild west coast. But first, here's Bryony. Their winsome waddle has seen them become the beloved stars of children's books and even TV soaps. But most wombats don't usually seek the limelight. In the wild, they're quite shy. And that's why Cleland Wildlife Park's wombat experience is such a special encounter. Keeper Jason is taking us on a brunch date. So what's going to happen today? OK, so we're going to go in with the lovely Fred. Um, we're going to feed him uh, his beautiful food here. Um, yeah, and hopefully give him a pat, um, have a bit of a chat about him, uh, find out a few things about common wombats. Come on, Fred. Yeah, buddy. Come on up, guys. Hello, Fred. Hi, Fred. Here we go, mister. G'day, buddy. Though Fred's a common wombat, his behaviour is anything but. He hasn't been trained for meet and greets. Jason says he just seems to like having visitors drop by. Fred uh, came to us when he was about uh, two years old. He's about 16 now. Wombats only probably live till they're about 10 or 12 in the wild, so he's pretty much well beyond his normal lifespan. But he's still a really healthy fella. He really enjoys these encounters. We basically just worked out that we were sitting with him and enjoying his company. We sort of thought, why can't we do something with the public? They can appreciate him as well. While common wombats aren't endangered like their hairy-nosed cousins, they're a protected species in SA, and this is one of the few places in Australia that offers an up-close chance to learn. Did you know, for example, that wombats can reach speeds of up to 40 kilometres per hour? They don't tend to look at people. They just sort of put their head down and just, just run, so uh, it's a 30-kilo boulder coming at you. Their teeth never stop growing, so they can cope with the tough, gritty bark and roots they eat. And their paws and claws are perfect for digging. He's dug his own burrow there. Um, we've got mesh about three metres down, um, so we know he can't go further than three metres, but he can go anywhere sideways, so we're not sure how extensive his burrow is, but it could have five or six different sort of uh, chambers off of it. There are all sorts of surprising wombat tricks and traits the Cleland Keepers share with visitors during the wombat encounter, but I'm not going to give everything away here. There's not an ironclad guarantee that Fred will come out to meet his guests on every single occasion, because he does need his beauty sleep. How many hours a day sleeping do you reckon? Probably about 18. I think I want Fred's job. Now, you may remember we showed you Cleland's fascinating breakfast with the birds experience not long ago. A chance for an early morning exclusive guided tour through three different aviaries. Well, why don't you pop up and do both? You can find details about all the interactive encounters and make bookings on Cleland's website. Keep in mind, though, that Fred's negotiated a four-day week and that age limits apply, so check the details carefully. So if you were thinking Cleland was just all about kangaroos and koalas, think again, because these two experiences should be on your bucket list. Coming up, the creative spirit of the Nullarbor. Well, the end of the year is rapidly approaching and our calendars are filling up fast with events. The Christmas Riverbank display is set to light up the banks of the River Torrens at the side door of the West End Brewery from the 1st of December. Now in its 59th year, it all started with a simple Santa and has now grown into an impressive display that's not to be missed. Speaking of Christmas, make sure you mark Saturday the 15th of December in your diary for this year's QBE Carols by Candlelight in Elder Park. It promises to be a fantastic night of Christmas cheer. Entry is via donation, so pack the picnic rug and make sure you get there early to snag a great spot. G'day, my name's Linton Brown. I'm the owner-operator of Sojourner Shelley Beach Caravan Park and Sojourner is the oyster capital of Australia. This is paradise. The beaches and the serenity on the beaches is just stunning. 
We've got everything from unpowered camping sites where you can roll out a swag. We've got our powered sites. The luxury accommodation are the villas and we have three and they have spas inside. You've got about 70 to 80 metres to the water's edge and you've got a really good view. It's just beautiful and relaxing sitting there and looking at the ocean and without turning your head you can be watching the big screen TV or just relaxing watching the view. We also have the eco villas and they're a bit down on price so that everyone can get a view of the beach but they're still very luxurious. The reason we call them eco is because they've got the smallest footprint possible. Sejuna is on the far west coast of South Australia. The one thing I really enjoyed the day I came to look at this business, which was in 98, was walking down the main street. Every person who walked past me looked me in the eye and said, G'day, mate. Go down to the beach, you can go inland, you can go to the Googs track from here. It's all here. You can spend a week here in Sejuna even. Hello, my name is Pam Dement. I work here at Art Sejuna. I have spent 10 years working here before as a manager. Art Sejuna supports anyone who wants to come in and do art. I mean, a really good example would be Ashley Pompey, who started here two and a half years ago. When Ashley first came in, he hadn't painted before, and it's basically changed his life. And he's doing these amazing paintings, which I have never seen anywhere else. He's so passionate about his work, and they're the people that, you know, you really look after and push forward into major art prizes, exhibitions, and stuff like that. So that's what Art Sejuna does. Main bulk of our people to Art Sejuna who are buyers and can come and have a look in the gallery are tourists. There's paintings from probably about 35 artists from within the region, so they've got a very good choice. They can go and talk to the artists. Places like this have such good positive outcomes for Indigenous people in the community. We've got artworks now over in a Swiss gallery the whale hung in the Oceanographic Museum of Monaco. So, you know, it's fantastic exposure for a small community like Sejuna, and the artists and that should be really proud. Hi, my name is Craig Irvine. I'm the chairperson of the Sejuna Foreshore Hotel in Sejuna. It is a magnificent hotel. You wouldn't realise it's sitting in a small country town. As we are a town on the way to WA and back, we have heaps and heaps of tourists that come through every year. We have lots of accommodation here at the Sooner Hotel. It's about three or four different options that we have. The views from our top 12 rooms are magnificent. Looking over the bay of Murat Bay, not too many places that actually face the west, so you do get a sunset every night. Our food has been rated by lots of people that come through. We pride ourselves on our local produce. It's a farming territory, so we get a lot of sheep and cow from the local farmers. And also, our seafood is magnificent. Our waters are pristine. You can't get any fresher. It's straight from the fishermen, straight into our hotel and cooked up. Myself, I'm a, a local lad that's born and bred, uh, 45 now, been here my whole life. It's a great community. Everyone helps each other out, as most small country towns do. But pop in, just drop in, stay the night, stay a couple of nights. There's lots of stuff to see and do in Sejuna and we'll give you a great time and show you around. After the break, we head underground in Adelaide Arcade. Everything old is new again, or so it seems for 100-year-old businessman John Johnston, as he and longtime business associate John Hardy bring an icon back into Adelaide Arcade. You'll find over the cleaning if you had one of these. The old Godfrey's vacuum cleaners and floor polishers were a feature of this retail strip for many years, from when the Adelaide store was first established in 1939. I looked at them and I said, I can sell those bloody things, you know. That's John in his double-breasted suit back in the early days. He's bought the company again and has it firmly installed where he thinks it belongs, Adelaide Arcade. Yes, it's a homecoming. And like the old Godfrey store, another Adelaide Arcade gem may soon be back. It's one of South Australia's little secrets, the underground tea rooms here in the Adelaide Arcade. But why were they built here? Well, it's all about this, its hidden spring. Back in the day, this place was ticking over with a young John Johnston, one of its many customers. I used to come and have something there once a day, perhaps. What'd you have? Uh, sort of a pie and something like that. They were here from the very beginning. Now there are plans to make this a focal point again. 
Well, we're looking at opening up the tea rooms as tea rooms when we find the right people, because it's very important to find the right person to run the tea rooms. That'll probably be after Christmas, but before Christmas, we're looking at a gin bar, we think. So keep an eye on this heritage landmark as it continues to evolve. When built in 1885, the Adelaide Arcade was a statement about prosperous times in an emerging city. Soon after, though, the Federation drought hit. But this strip has continued to prosper in good times and bad. Its domed roof entrances hark back to a time when genteel society would enter this arcade to see and to be seen. At either end of the arcade in Rundle Street and Grenfell Street, horse-drawn carriages and trams would be working full tilt. And that meant many shoppers would need to step over and occasionally they would step on all that horses leave behind. Here, they could escape all that. They could promenade in what has always been a retail oasis. No horses today, but plenty of shoppers still promenading down a retail strip with the lot. Like two-bit villains with its vegan fare and a great balcony view over Rundle Mall. And out here, more Adelaide secrets abound. Adelaide Arcade's got many, many mysteries. We've got our coat of arms, which is on both of the domes at the end of the building, and uh, that actually predates the Australian federal coat of arms by a few years. And our emu and kangaroo are back to front. Well, the Australian coat of arms are back to front, perhaps. <laughs> you were first. That's right. This elegant retail precinct predates the Strand in Sydney and the block in Melbourne. For its history, head to nearby Gay's Arcade, where you can hear the Adelaide Arcade Grand Polka, specially composed for the grand opening. There's also a new touchscreen to bring you up to date with previous SA Weekender stories and also the tales of a ghost who still wanders the arcade in the wee small hours. Adelaide Arcade was one of the first with electricity and that was from its own generator. So we actually had a generator located in what's now Manhattan Dry Cleaner. The story is that Francis, who was the caretaker at the time, literally fell into the generator, so he came to a bloody end. From ghosts of the past to a reborn business for the future, Adelaide Arcade has it all. We're still a very modern retail arcade with everything you need. So it just shows how you can progress and evolve through history. Why not promenade soon through what's been an Adelaide retailing icon for generations? Next, the latest adventure playground for four-wheel drive fanatics. Over the last decade or so, the popularity of SUVs and four-wheel drives on our roads have soared. But how many of us would actually be comfortable to take them off the bitumen? So, I've come up to the band's brand new four-wheel drive adventure park to learn some new off-roading skills and to have some fun. By now, you've probably heard of the Bend Motorsport Park, just out of Tail and Bend. It's the second longest permanent racetrack on the planet. And when fully completed, this world-class motorsport development is expected to cost around 110 million bucks. But what you might not know is they've just unveiled their latest offering for dirt fiends. Situated in the corner of this huge 750 hectare property, G'day, Ricky. G'day, Hazy. How are you? Good, thanks, mates. Uh, I'm very excited. What have you got in store for me? Oh, a little bit of fun, maybe even a bit of madness. Oh, gosh, I don't know if I'm scared or excited. Let's <laughs> give it a crack. No worries. Ricky Esser is a trainer here at The Bend. A passionate four-wheel drive enthusiast, he lives and breathes off-roading. He's going to teach me a few tips and tricks, starting with lowering the tyre pressure. All right, let's rock and roll. <laughs> the Adventure Park has taken advantage of a disused quarry where they've created some tricky terrain that's perfect for both experienced and novice four-wheel drivers like me. <laughs> that doesn't feel safe, does it? I feel like I'm going to end up on top of you there. Okay, you're all right. <laughs> From sand traps and dunes, rock and log obstacles, steep inclines, tabletops, to what feels like death-defying declines. 
You want to see control kick in, so just put off the brake and that'll control the descent nicely. Oh, nice. There's a challenge around every corner, and who could resist a muddy water crossing? Uh, not me. Just dip the toe in and now take your foot off the brake and now accelerate. Accelerate, there you go, accelerate. That's it, excellent. All right, so keep it going there and then we stop and let the water drain. So full driving's not hard. It's all about picking the right line, yep. putting your wheels on the high points, yep. going as slow as possible and only as fast as necessary. The faster you go, the more damage you can cause, so don't get too excited. Yeah. You've got to trust the vehicle because it's always going to deliver. Yes. Oh, look, yeah, the technology that's in this Isuzu uh, and the MUX is absolutely fantastic, not only for as a passenger vehicle, but to have the four drive technology that it has in it, it really does shine as a multi-purpose vehicle. And they're also excellent for towing as well. There we go. That was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. This experience is a lot of fun, and it's a great way to get to know your vehicle in a safe environment. I'd recommend it to anyone with a four-wheel drive. And I'm proud to say we got through unscathed. Of course, you don't have to be doing a drive experience or attend an event to visit the Bend. Anyone can pop into their welcome centre at any time and check out their impressive car collection. There's also a cafe and a bar on site, perfect for fueling up. There's nothing like a bit of four-wheel driving to work up an appetite. Have a look at this. Believable. Mm. Here, you can sit amongst a collection and sample a steak with a superbike or a pasta with a Porsche. How cool is that? Anyone that comes to the Ben Motorsport Park, apart from enjoying what we've got to offer in the Welcome Centre, we've got the fastest go-karts in Australia, which is a bit of fun. We've got single-seater and tandem, so you can have a bit of fun with a maid or the family. We've also got unique driver experiences with V8 race cars, open-wheeler cars, and they're all coming really soon. If you're mad about motors, you can even stay above pit lane, no less, at the Ridges Hotel. Simply mention SA Weekender when you book for a sensational deal. It includes a night's accommodation with free upgrade, buffet breakfast for two, drinks on arrival and a late checkout. And for more information about the Ben's many experiences, events and drive days, simply head to their website. Well, I've had a great time up here at the Bend, and if you're up this way and you're into your cars, make sure you come and check this place out. It's amazing. Now, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today.